Hello all and welcome to this hands-on lab. In our lab today, we will learn how to create single and multi-measure databases using Amazon Timestream. A couple of things to keep in mind before we start with the lab. AWS services used in this lab can incur charges. Hence, ensure that you clean up all resources after completing this lab. Prerequisites for this lab is knowledge of Amazon Timestream. Hence, if you do not know what this service is all about, please refer to this overview tutorial that I had created some time back. URL to the tutorial is mentioned right here at the bottom. I will also have it posted in the description of this video. These are some reference URLs. Again, I will have it posted in the description of this video. I would definitely recommend that you review through these URLs. You could do that post this lab as well. Scenario for our lab today. In today's lab, we will create a sample single and a multi-measure database and observe its schema, understand the differences between a single measure and a multi-measure database, and also run some sample queries. So it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing complicated, right? So let's get started. Step one, before you start with the lab, please ensure that your user has access to Amazon Timestream. And how can you ensure that? Whoever your user is, whatever your username that you're using, go ahead and add an existing policy, which is Amazon Timestream full access to your user. If you do not have administrative rights to add policies, whoever has, please tell them to provide this particular access to you. Once your user has this access, you will be all set. Step two. So first thing that we will do is we will create a single measure database. So these are the steps. We'll go to time stream, then go to databases, create database, select sample database. This is the name that I'll be using. That is fleet management single measure. Of course, you are more than welcome to use any other name that you like, right? Under the tables, we will select the IoT table, right? With sample data, we will select single measure records, right? Around the type of uh, time series records. And finally, we will go ahead and create the database. And once the database has been created, we will verify both the database and the table. Once you finish these steps, ensure that you write down the name of the database and your table. So let's get started. So this is my Amazon console. Now my user already has access to time stream. So I'll be skipping step one. But as I mentioned earlier, if your user does not have, you can test it, you know, verify whether the user has access or not. If it does not have, ensure that you add the policy to your user. Okay, so here is Amazon Time Stream, which is, you know, go to Amazon Time Stream, click on databases, create database. So this is databases. Click on create database. Right. And here we will select sample database. So that is step three. So this is sample database. Now this is a name that I will be giving that is fleet management single measure. Of course, you can give any other name. And as I mentioned, please have it copied somewhere, especially if you are someone like me, I tend to forget the names that I have given. Now, so we completed the first four steps. Now select IoT under, uh, under tables with sample data. So let's go back. So this is IoT, so it is already selected. And this is a single measure uh, database. So we will select single measure records right here, right? And finally, we will go ahead and click on create database. So we have basically completed all of these steps. So let us go ahead and click on create database right here. And finally, we have to verify whether the database was created successfully, right? So the last two steps of verification and review the IoT table. 
So let us go and verify that. So this is our database right here. And under tables, we should have the IoT table. So both our database and table has been created. Now remember, this is a sample database, hence it comes pre-populated. And that is one of the main reasons I'm using this for the lab so that we do not scramble around for data. So we have completed step two. And again, as always, this is the database name and the table name is IOT, right? This is the name of your table right here. So copy the name if you do not remember. So let's move further ahead. This is step three. Now in step three, we will review the IOT table. So again, go to Amazon Time Stream, click on Query Editor, right? So this is Amazon Time Stream. This is Query Editor right there. And this is our database that has been selected and we have our table right here. So that's what it says, select the database. IoT table should appear at the bottom where the tables appear. And then finally, let us review the table structure. So if you see, we have fleet, we have truck ID, fuel capacity, model, load capacity, make, measure name, right? Remember there's a single measure. That means each record will only have one measure in it. And what that measure is, we can figure that out using the measure name. Of course, it's a time stream database, so you will have timestamp. And finally, you will have the measured value. So let us you know, just deep dive into this and figure out what this database holds. I mean, what this table essentially holds, what kind of data it holds, and what are the different measures it has. So let us run a very sim simple query, select stuff from, and you can just, you know, uh, press control and space, and that will give you the name of the database as you see right up at the, at the top. Hit tab, again, hit dot, IoT, and then you should click on run right here. So let us see what the output is all about. So there are approximately 1,600 records in this particular table, right? And we have fleet, we have truck ID, fuel capacity, model, load capacity, the make, the measure name. So the measure name is load. This is the timestamp and this is the measure value. Now let us do one thing. Let us figure out if we can identify all the different uh, records for a single truck, right? So where, again, fleet management dot IOT dot truck ID is equal to this. I don't know whether this was character. Yeah, it's a character. Okay, so let's see. So this should give us all the, what do you say? All the records for that particular truck ID. Now, if this is not easily visible, let me see if I can zoom in a little. Hopefully this should help now. It should be distinctly visible, right? So let me hit run. Let's see how many records we get. So we got approximately 40 records over here. So let me zoom out a little now. And the measure name primarily is load. If you've seen most of the records over here, let, let us see if we have yeah, another measure that we have is fuel reading, right? And that's the value for fuel reading. Remember, this is a single measure table. So we saw load, we saw fuel reading. And then we have another measure, which is location. And do we have any other measures? Let's check. And we have speed. So for this particular truck, right? For this particular truck, as in this particular truck ID, in this table, we have 40 records. And in this 40 records, we have four different unique measures. That is load, fuel capacity, speed, and which was the other one? Location. And for each of these measures, as you see, this is location. This is a timestamp. And this is the value for that particular measure. So when it's a single measure table, right, you will have all your dimensions, right? 
So these are all your different dimensions that is fleet, truck ID, fuel capacity, model, load capacity, make. And then finally, you will have your measure name. For example, location, load, fuel capacity, oh, sorry, uh, what is uh, a speed. I keep on forgetting those, some of these measures. So pardon me on that. Fuel reading, not fuel capacity, my bad. So fuel reading. So for each of those four measures, you will have the corresponding value. Now, if the measure value is double, that is the data type is double, then it is stored over here. If the measure value, for example, it is, which one has location? Location has a where care, that means a string value, right? Non-numeric, then it is stored over here under measure value, that is where care. So I hope that you've understood this. So the key to remember over here is that it's a single measure table. That means every record will have its dimension. It will have a single measure. That measure name, whatever that measure may be, that measure name is stored in the measure name column, right? And there's, of course, it's a time series database, so there will be a timestamp. And the value of that measure name is stored, the measure value is stored in the corresponding column after that. Now, depending upon whether it's a double or a where care, it will be stored accordingly. So this is typically how a single measure table works. So hopefully this is 100% clear. So we have finished step three. So let's continue further ahead. Step four is to create a multi-measure database. So now let us go ahead and create a multi-measure database. So let me uh, get out of this, go back to our time stream, again, databases, right? And let us review some of the steps. So again, back to time stream, databases, create database, sample database. Of course, this is the name that I'll be using for my multi-measure database. Again, you can use any name that you like. We'll select same IoT, but instead of single measure, this time around, we will be selecting multi-measure records. And finally, we will go ahead and create the database. Once the database has been created, then we will verify the database and the table. Again, remember to write down the name of your database and your table. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is databases, create database, right? Remember to select sample database. Now you can give whatever name that you like. I'm going to give this particular name, which is fleet management multi-measure. So I had my name copied somewhere over here. Again, I'm going to copy back here, but instead of single measure, I'm going to make it multi-measure, IOT. Remember, this is multi-measure records. So we are going to select that and then finally click on create database. So our database has been created successfully, right? This is our database right here. If you see, this is a database. Let's click on tables. And then this is a table, which is IoT Multi. So ensure that you copy your database name, right? And your table name. So this is Multi and this is IoT Multi. Right, so now let us go ahead and look at some of the data in this table. So I think that is, we completed all of these steps, right? So step four is complete. And now we will review the table and its data. So again, we'll go to query editor. We select our database and, and table. And finally, we will review the structure. We'll run this particular query and then eventually review the data and how each measure is stored. So let's go here, let's go to query editor. Now, if you do not see the name immediately, just like how I'm not able to see the name immediately, do not panic, right? There's a refresh icon over here, hit refresh. And now you should be able to see your multi-measure database. So this is my multi-measure, so I'm gonna select that. Again, the tables are pre-populated at the bottom. Go down. And the this is our IoT multi-measure. So if you see the, the columns over here, right? So again, you have your 
uh, fleet, you have your truck ID, fuel capacity, model load capacity, make, uh, measure name. And then you have your timestamp. Now, understand one thing that this is a multi-measure database. That means with each record, you will have multiple measures. So if you go and look at the measure name and we'll go into the data, you will see it will come as multi-measure or, or metrics or, or you know something very specific. Why is that? In, and basically each of the measures that you saw earlier in your single measure database, which is load, fuel, reading, location, and speed, now in a multi-measure database are individual columns with the right data type. Right. So this is one of the key differences that you have to understand between a single measure database and a multi-measure database. In a single measure database, you have your, your individual row and your measure is essentially you have to determine, OK, this is my measure and this is its corresponding value. And you could have multiple columns depending upon the type of data that measure would hold. But in a multi-measure database, you will have each of those individual measures as columns over here. So that is the key difference. Why? Because for each record, you will be capturing all of these measures, right? In most situations, that's the case. Of course, you can pick and choose. But in most situations, you will be capturing each of these measures. So now let us go ahead and run this query. Ensure that you clear this. Let me zoom in a little, right? So you can see what I'm typing. So select start from, and again, you can, you know, press control space bar. Again, you'll have your multi-measure dot IOT multi, and let's run this query. Now you have this multi-measure database, right? So this is multi-measure database. Again, if you see over here, the measure name is IOT multi stats and for each record, right, with the timestamp, of course, you will have your load, your fuel reading, your location, and speed. So hopefully, the difference should be crystal clear. In a single measure database, you would ideally have four records, right? But in a multi-measure database, you will have one record that will have all the four or all of the required measures that you want. Now, just like how we did for a single measure database, right? let me copy one of these truck IDs, right? And then we can probably drill down further. So let's say where, and again, multi-measure.iot multi.truck ID is equal to this particular value. So let me zoom in so you can see. So this is my query. Right. Again, you could pretty much take any value that you like, but this is a value that I just took from one of the sample records at the bottom. Now let me zoom out, run the query. Right. And basically for that particular truck ID, we have 10 records as you see right here. And these are different records for different timestamps. If you see, right. And you have these individual records. Now you have all of your records in this one single page. And basically now you can, let's say slice and dice, like, hey, I want from between this time to this time or from this day to this date, you can slice and dice this information, this data, any way, way that you like. You can develop your own matrix, your, your charts, your graphs, whatever analytics you want to run on this data is totally up to you. The data is now populated. And of course, people do a significant amount of reporting on this depending upon their use case. So let me go back. We have finished step five. Let's go to step six. So in step six, right? Again, I think we've ran most of the queries from our side. But one of the things that I would like to show you is this sample queries. And I would certainly encourage you to run these sample queries. Right, it is pretty straightforward. Now, in from for me, in most cases, these sample queries typically run very well with a single measure database. If you want to run it with a multi-measure database, I had to kind of make some tweaks. But at least right now, for this particular lab, let's run it for the single measure database so that you can understand how these sample queries work. 
So let me go to the query editor again. And if you see over here, you have something called a sample queries. If you click on that, right, you will see for the IoT scenario, that's the scenario that we are using. There are approximately, I think, five or six queries over here, right? So you see one, two, three, four, five, the top five, these five. And if you want to basically run these queries, you can easily do that. So the first query, as you say, as you see over here, it says, get a list of all the sensor attributes and values being monitored for each truck in the fleet. And if you click on this query, right? So again, this is for multi-measure, but see if it works or not. I hope they have fixed the query or not, but essentially it generally worked pretty well for me for single measure. Check if it works or not. This is uh, right now coming from multi-measure, so which is a good thing. I think they've fixed it, so which is good. So now this is select all, all your columns over here in multi-measure database, and this is the group by at the bottom. Let's see if this runs properly. So I'm just zooming in so you can read the query. So this is the query. This is pre-populated, right? Okay. Okay. So now let us run the query. Okay, fleet management, IoT doesn't exist. I will have to change this. Okay, it's IoT multi. Okay, so this is, again, see, this is what I was saying. Like sometimes it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, just go back and look at the query. Right, guys? I mean, I think they've tried to fix it. If you use a single measure, it, I think it generates for single measure. If you use multi-measure, it tries to generate it for multi-measure, right? But if you have both of them, uh, then I think it gets a little confused because it uses the same table name as IoT. It does not figure out that, hey, both, both single measure and multi-measure are present and multi-measure, the table name could be different. Okay, let's try and run this thing again. So hopefully I've made the change of multi IoT multi over here. Let's run this. And that's your information right here, right? Perfect, now let us try and run another sample query. Now again, this is for multi-measure. Let's click on this query, right? And let's zoom in and see what the query is all about. So this is to get the most recent fuel reading for each truck in the fleet in the past 24 hours. Okay, so with the last recorded, uh, recorded time, remember this is a time series database, so you can do max time as latest time. Like the measure that they are looking for is fuel reading, right? And then by the truck. Now let's see if this works for a uh, multi-measure, okay? Because if you remember under multi-measure, we did not have anything as fuel reading. Under multi-measure, I think it's IoT measure matrix or something like that as a measure name. But again, hold on, I have to first fix the table. This is IoT multi, IoT multi, hopefully. Yeah, I don't think this, this should work, but let's check because here the measure name, it is looking for fuel reading. Yeah, it, see, it doesn't, it doesn't, didn't work. So this is what I was talking about. So let me um, zoom out a little bit. Now, if I go over here and make this a single measure, right, and change this to IoT, right? And now in, remember in single measure, we do have the measure name as field reading, right? And hopefully, hopefully now this should work. So let me run this. Okay, IoT, okay, why is it looking for? Oh, my bad. Okay, I forgot to change the name. Okay, run. Okay, so now you can see that this particular query, after making the required changes, works very well. 
with single measure. Now let us choose single measure itself, go back to sample queries. Now if you see it change to single measure, right? That's what it does. It kind of flips around depending upon the database that you have selected. And then let's run with run this query. Now this particular query is basically to identify trucks that have been running on low fuel that is less than 10% in the past 48 hours. So let's click on this query. Now, hopefully I don't need to make any changes. So let's just zoom in a little bit, right? And you will see that with, with uh, low fuel trucks, it's doing a select. It is, since it's looking for percentages using fuel capacity and then multiplying that by 100 as fuel percentage. This is the database name, this is the table name. And then that is less than 10%. The measure name is again, fuel reading other trucks, and then it is trying to get all the information at the bottom. Okay, and then finally saying that select distinct truck ID, fleet, et cetera, from low fuel trucks, and then finally get the information. Okay, so let us see if this query works. Okay, so let's click on run. And it returned these two records. So I hope that this is clear. There are two more queries over here, if you see. And again, when you are practicing by yourself, feel free to execute some of these queries. I use the IoT scenario over here. You can use a DevOps scenario as well, right? Both for single measure and multi-measure. But I hope that the concept is clear. You've clearly understood, right? How both a single measure and a multi-measure database works. And then we also ran some sample queries. These are just for you to play. You're more than welcome to create your own queries as well. So with that, we have completed step six and this particular lab. I hope this lab was helpful. Do play around with this particular service. It's an amazing service. And then, you know, that will help you to basically understand, you know, where all you can use that in your day-to-day -day life. The applicability of the service should be clearly understood. So thank you very much. And I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.